guys, it's Vicki, and today I am here to talk about what I read during middle grade March. Um, middle grade March was a fabulous time for me. Um, it's, it was a month-long readathon I took part in where the whole goal was to read middle grade books. It was hosted by Krista from Books and Jams and Katie from Life Between Words, two wonderful ladies that I adore here on BookTube, and I'm so glad that they decided to do this readathon again. Um, there were five challenges and also a group read, and I fulfilled all five challenges and the group read. So I am really proud of myself. I'm going to pat myself on the back. So um, today I'm going to talk about the books that I read for middle grade March. I'm going to do a separate wrap up for the non middle grade books that I read during the month. So I started off middle grade March with the first challenge, which was, I think it was the first challenge, which was to read a nonfiction or a book based on a book based on actual events. And so I read How They Croaked by Georgia Bragg. This was a nonfiction book basically about famous people throughout history and how they died. Super morbid, but also super fascinating. And oddly, it was also very humorous. Um, the author definitely brought a lot of humor to this very dark subject. Um, because a, a lot of the people mentioned in this book did die pretty horrible deaths. In many cases, deaths that could have been prevented had things been different during their time, you know, during their lifetime and whatnot. Um, I really, really enjoyed this book, and I really learned a lot from this book, which has surprised me. For example, I mean, I'm 35 years old, and I learned from this book, because it never occurred to me, that it's that a cesarean section is called a cesarean, because Julius Caesar was born that way. He was, he was cut from his mother's womb. How did I not know that? How did I not know that? Please tell me I'm not the only one who didn't know that. But yeah, that's something that I learned in that book. I also learned that bloodletting is as awful as it sounds. Um, horrible medical practice that they used to do, um, in which basically they would like cut you and just let you bleed in the hopes that whatever was ailing you would just bleed out with with your blood <laughs> the main reason that I think it's such a good book is because it got me wanting to read about more about some of these historical figures or about the time period in which they lived it kind of just kind of grabbed me a little bit and now has me wanting to read more which to me is a sign of a wonderful book especially when you're talking about a book that's geared towards children um, because in this book there he the author doesn't only talk about the people and how they died. She talks about things that were kind of going on at the time or little like tidbits about history that could really I think engage a child and make them go, huh, I want to read more about that. So I think that's great and I really had a lot of fun with this book. It was it was great <laughs> and I would highly recommend it to people. Um, I gave it four out of five stars. I initially was going to give it five but unfortunately I did find um, that there was a there was one instance in particular where there was a historical inaccuracy, um, which to me is not good when you're doing a nonfiction book. <laughs> it's like you need to make sure your ducks are in a row. So I did dock it a star for that reason. Um, but I loved it so much that I couldn't, you know, give it a lower rating than a four because I found it so enjoyable. Overall, it was it was educational, entertaining, and I really liked it. Next up, I listened to the audiobook of Brown Girl Dreaming by Jacqueline Woodson, and I'm so glad that I did the audiobook because Jacqueline herself narrates the audiobook, and so hearing her read her own words was very nice. Um, her story was, um, like she even says in her afterward, it's, it was pretty ordinary, her life, but it was also amazing, and I think that that describes this book pretty perfectly um, because... She grew up um, for a time in the South, um, I believe it was South Carolina, it was one of the Carolinas, um, and then they, and then her family moved to New York, so she was kind of, goes from this kind of um, slow, easy country kind of lifestyle to New York City, and obviously in both places um, she's dealing with race, racism, things like that, but it's all coming from a child's perspective, and I think that that was the beauty of this book, was that Jacqueline Woodson wrote this book um, in a way that children reading it 
are being exposed to topics, darker topics, serious topics like racism, but she's approaching it in a way that children can understand. So I really enjoyed it. I thought it was a wonderful book and one that I would definitely love to get on my shelves um, to have my children read when they are old enough, and I gave it four out of five stars. Next up, I listened to another audiobook, <laughs> and that was Inside Out and Back Again by Tanha, I'm going to say it wrong, Tanha Lai. I, I, I swear I looked up how to pronounce this right before I started filming, and I, I just can't remember. Anyway, <laughs> this was another book that was told in verse, um, just like Brown Girl Dreaming, which, by the way, I didn't mention that, but Brown Girl Dreaming fulfilled the challenge to read um, either a book, actually it fulfilled three challenges, because you it was read a book in verse, it was read a diverse book, or it was um, read a nonfiction book. So, okay. But, anyways, Inside Out and Back Again was another book that was told in verse in another diverse read. This time it was about a girl named Ha, who um, moves from Vietnam to the United States after the fall of Saigon, so the Vietnam War era. And her family moves to the United States not knowing the language and having, you know, having to um, learn American culture um, because it differs from Vietnamese culture. But I loved that part of the book, the early part of the book where they were still in Vietnam, learning about Vietnamese culture I thought was, was so nice and it makes me want to read more about that. Again, the sign of a great book. Um, her story, though, is so inspiring because can you imagine coming to a country, a brand new country as a child, not being able to speak the language, um, nothing like that. And having, and not only that, there were also people in their community that um, did not treat them very well because they were Vietnamese. Um, yeah, very powerful read. I really loved it. Um, it's again another one that I want to get to have on my shelves so that my kids can read it. And again, I gave it four out of five stars. My next middle grade March read was um, the group read, which was Sweep, the story of a girl and her monster by, I don't have the author, the author's name handy, but I'm going to put the book up here um, because I had to return it to the library already. So the author's name will be there. But um, this was a wonderful story. Um, it's set in Victorian London, and it's about a girl named Nan who is a chimney sweep. And right off the bat, that was something that I had no idea actually happened, that there were children in that time period as young as four. So as young as my daughter, <laughs> working as chimney sweeps. Um, to me, that is just crazy. The hazardous conditions that they lived in, that just the way they were treated, all of those things, and these things actually happened. Um, wow. But it's about a girl named Nan who somehow, I don't want to say exactly how, but she ends up having this golem, which is like a type of monster, who is made of ash and soot, and his name is Charlie. She names him Charlie. It's about their friendship. It's about her life as a sweep. Um, and how she kind of gets along in life. And oh, I really, really loved this book. I thought it was so sweet. I loved how it touched on some pretty um, mature themes. Uh, things like child labor, poverty, um, and things like that. But it, again, it's written in a way that I think children are, it gets them thinking, but it doesn't like traumatize them. Um, and again, Again, this is like a this is gonna be like a theme throughout. It had me wanting to read more about this whole chimney sweep business <laughs> in Victorian London because I had no knowledge of it. I mean, I knew that there were chimney sweeps, but to be honest, the only thing I really knew was what from what I learned from Mary Poppins from watching the Mary Poppins movie, Step in Time, and all that stuff. <laughs> so it was like I had no real real knowledge of it at all. So it has me wanting to read more, which is, again, a sign of a wonderful book, and I really enjoyed that one. Um, it definitely, like, tugged at my heart, and I gave that one also four out of five stars. Next up, I read and completed probably my favorite um, middle grade read for the month. Um, I adored this story, and it is The One and Only Ivan by Katherine Applegate. 
Um, this was a Newbery Medal winner, and I can totally see why. This book was so good. It was so good. It's about a gorilla named Ivan, and he lives in captivity in this um, kind of like roadside mall. And his life is so sad. Granted, he does have some friends, an elephant and a little dog named Bob. Um, but his, his life, being that he is a gorilla, it's not great. And it's about how his life changes um, when a new little baby elephant comes into the mall um, and kind of changes Ivan and gives him more purpose. Um, oh, I just loved this. I did not know going into it that it is told, technically it is told in verse, did not know that. And this um, edition that I have, it is huge as you can see, but it is also illustrated and so it was really it was a really nice read. I really loved it. Um, it is so full of heartbreak, but also so full of hope. And I just love books like that. And I would love to read this with my daughter, maybe in a couple of years, because there's some stuff in here that I just, I don't know if I'm ready for her to, to read about, maybe. I don't know. Um, but yeah, this was fabulous. And I gave it five stars because I just loved it so much um, because also I didn't know that it's based on a true story um, which is again so upsetting but um, yeah I loved this I can't recommend this enough uh, definitely pick this one up if you have not and then the last book that I read for middle grade March was The Girl Who Drank the Moon by Kelly Barnhill this is another one that won the Newbery Medal um, this one though um, I'm not gonna lie I struggled with it a little bit in the beginning because and this is all me, I know. Um, I have said before that fantasy sometimes, well not sometimes, most of the time, I struggle with it because I just have a hard time settling into the story. I don't know why. Because like Harry Potter, I ate up Harry Potter. Loved it. But when you start, when you, I get a story and you start talking about like magical, you know, um, witches and uh, things of that nature. I just, I don't know. My brain just starts to like struggle. So at first I was like, gosh, I don't know if I'm really feeling this book. Um, but I kept going because I did want to know more about the story. And the story does have a very magical fairy tale feeling to it. Um, and I ended up really enjoying it. So I'm glad I stuck with it. I am. But it was a bit of a struggle to start with. But it's about um, it's about a community where this witch lives in the woods, and they're all terrified of this witch. And they think that by giving the witch a baby every year as like a sacrifice, that she will leave them alone, basically. And every year the witch comes and takes the baby, and is like, "Why do they keep leaving me these babies? <laughs> I don't understand." So she takes them to other communities through the other side of the forest and along the way she feeds them starlight. Um, and so they go off and they live these happy lives except this one time she accidentally feeds a baby moonlight and it makes her extremely magical and powerful. And the story kind of goes from there. And I ended up really liking it. Um, the ma even the magical elements and everything, it was, it was really interesting, really fun. Um, so whimsical and I loved how it touched on themes of um, kind of like outward appearances and how sometimes people misjudge basically and that you should be a little more careful about that and not jump to conclusions about people and assume things about people and I think that that's a wonderful theme to have um, in a children's book because obviously children need to know that <laughs> pretty early on um, to you know be nice uh, and to give people a chance um, I really think that this book did it in a wonderful way um, by using the whole magic and fantasy elements um, I thought the writing was great um, I heard before I read this that Kelly Barnhill does not write down to her readers and that's absolutely true um, the writing was actually very mature I really really enjoyed it so um, yeah, this is a good one, and I gave it four out of five stars.
All right, guys, so those are all of the books that I read for middle grade March. I know I, as I went along, I totally forgot to tell you which ones fulfilled all the challenges. Um, so I told you about Brown Girl Dreaming and uh, how they croaked, but um, let's see. Inside Out and Back Again, I used as my diverse read. Um, the Girl Who Drank the Moon was my um, fantasy read. And uh, the one and only Ivan was... Um, a book of, where the main character is not a human. So, yes, I fulfilled all the challenges, and I read the, the group read, and it was wonderful. And I'm so glad that the girls, uh, the ladies, decided to do this again, and I, again, will do it next year if they decide to continue doing this readathon because I think it is a lot of fun, and I love reading middle grade now, um, especially now that my children are young, but eventually they will get to the point where they will be reading a lot of these books, and I love that I can read a lot of them. Um, beforehand so I kind of know what's out there. Um, it is totally, this readathon has totally broadened my horizons in terms of middle grade. So yes, it was great. Thank you to Katie and Krista and um, let me know down below if you took part in the readathon, what challenges did you get to, what kind of books did you read, I want to hear all about it. Um, but other than that, that's all I have. So I hope that you guys have a great day and I will talk to you very soon. Thanks for watching. Bye.